Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Bismillahi wa rahmani wa rahim In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful This presentation is on the beginning of creation In the beginning there was darkness And there was only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, glory to him And then there was light, Allah, glory be he by divine decree will the creation to be verily before your Lord made any other things he created from his own nur the light the light of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa peace and blessing be upon him everything in creation is linked to the number four Allah the Almighty divided his light the nur of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam into four parts first part he created the kalam, the pen second part he created the tablet, lo mahtud the third he created the divine throne, the arsh and then Allah, the fourth he divided into another four parts Allah created the throne bearing angels, hamma Allah al arsh these are the angels that hold up the arsh, the throne of Allah Two, Allah created the kursi, the footstool, the divine court, the upper heaven supporting the arsh, the throne. Third, Allah created all the other heavenly angels. Fourth, Allah partitioned once and more into four. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the sky, our skies. He made the earth. He made the jinns and the fire. And once again, he divided into four parts. Allah made the light upon the face of the believers. He made the light within their hearts and given them knowledge of the divine. He also made the third one the light upon their towns, which is the light of Tawheed, means the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fourth one, he made the different lights of the soul of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa this lovely soul came into being 60,000 years before the creation of the world and it was shaped most beautifully and made of incomparable matter. Its head was made from guidance, its neck from humanity, its eyes from modesty, its forehead from the closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, its mouth from the patient its tongue from the truthfulness its cheeks from the love and the warning its belly to sustain from eating and drinking and other worldliness its knees and feet for following the straight path and its noble heart was filled with mercy this much honored soul was taught with the mercy and equipped with all manners of wondrous power it was given its message and its perfect qualities were installed. Then the crown of divine proximity was placed upon its blessed head. Radiance in the and exalted above all else. Embellished with divine pleasure and was given the pure holy name of Habib Allah, the beloved of Allah, Surah Yasin. It is reported that Allah subhanahu has created the angels from newer light and he created Adam from clay and he created the beasts and the jinns from smokeless fire and he created the heaven from smoke and he created the earth from Zahadalma, the foam of the water. Remember we talked about the number four, here it is again. Four enemies that were created by Allah's hands. As recorded, Allah has created four things by His own hands. Prophet Adam, peace and blessings be upon him, the first of mankind, the arsh, which is the throne of Allah, the kalam, the pen of Allah, and genital Eden, in English, the garden of Eden. And for the rest of the creation, He said, kun faya kun fi, and they were. According to Allah, commenting on, and he said, the heavens and the earth come willingly or unwillingly. They said, we come willingly. 
as follows, Allah said to the heavens, Cause my sun and my moon to rise, and cause my star to rise, and the earth he replied, Split your rivers and bring forth your fruit. Both replied, We come willingly. The traffic Quran says, says that the heavens and the earth were joined together as one unit before we clove them asunder. Surah 21 verse 30 Following this big explosion, Allah turned to the sky and it had been a smoke. He said to it and to the earth, Come together willingly and willingly. They said, We come together in willing obedience. Surah 51 verse 11 First the elements and what was to become the planets, the stars begin to cool, come together and form the shape, following the natural laws that Allah established in the universe. The Quran further states that Allah created the sun, the moon, the planets, each on their own individual course or orbit. It is He who has created the night and the day, and the sun and the moon, all um, in their own orbits are all in their own course, all swimming around. Surah 21, verse 33. Allah created the heavens and the earth, and all that is in between, in six days. Surah 7, verse 54. While on the surface it may seem similar to the accounts related in the Bible, there are some important differences. The verses that mention six days use the word Yom, day in Arabic. This word appears several other times in the Quran, each denoting a different measure of time. In one case, the measure of a day is equal to 50,000 years. Surah 50, verse 4, where as another verse states, a day in the sight of your Lord is like a thousand years of your reckoning. Surah 22, verse 47. The word young is first to understand within the Quran to be a period of time, an era, an eon. Therefore Muslims interpret the description of six days of creation as six six different distinguished period or ion. The length of these periods are not precisely defined nor are specified developments that took place during each period. After completing the creation, the Quran describes that Allah settled himself on the throne, Surah 57 verse 4, to oversee his work. A distinct point is made to counter the Bible's idea of the day of rest. We create the heavens and the earth and all that is in between them in six days, nor did any sense of weariness touch us. Surah 50 38. Allah is never done with his work because the process of creation is ongoing. Each new child who is born, every seed that sprouts in the sapling, every new species that appears on the earth is part of an ongoing process of Allah's, of Allah's creation. He it is who created the heavenly earth in six days and established himself on the arsh, the throne. He knows what enters within the heart of the earth and what comes forth out of it, what comes down from the heavens, and what mounts up to it. And He is with you wherever you may be, and Allah sees well all that you do. Surah 57 verse 4 This proves that from the Bible it states that the six days after the creation and the rest of us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not really rest. It's an ongoing process of keeping all these things going, the building substance, the rain in the sky, all these things he orders the angels to go and do. All these things are much of us of how that keeps going to see what our needs are, our prayers we're praying to him, we're worshiping him, we're disobeying him. Um, all these things, uh, chaos is in the world, all these different situations, the last one that does not rest. So, we know in Islam is correct that Allah established himself on the throne where he uh, gives out all the commandments to the angels. The heaven and the earth were made in six days. The Quran states that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth 
and all that is in between in six days. Surah 7, verse 54. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create all the creation at one time. Had He will for this, it would have occurred. Rather, in six days, He created the heavens and the earth, and for earth, Allah created rivers, mountains, valleys, and the wisdom of this is to teach us not to be hasty, hasty in doing things. To him is Jew, the primary origin of the heavens and the earth. When he decrees a matter, he says to it, be and it is. Quran 2, verse 117. The guardian Lord is Allah, who created the heaven and the earth in six days, and is well established on its throne of authority. He draws the night as a veil over the day, each seeking the other in rapid succession. He created the sun, the moon, the star, all governed by laws under his command. It is if not is to create and to govern, lest be a lot, the cherisher and the sustainer of the world. Quran 7 Surah verse 54 Verily your Lord is Allah, who has created the heaven and the earth in six days, and firmly established on the throne of authority, regulating and governing all things. No interceder can plead with him, except after his leave has been ordained. This is Allah your Lord, him therefore serve. Will you not receive warning? Quran, Surah 10, verse 3. These are just some other verses showing that Allah has created the heavens and the earth in six days and is having himself on the throne and creating the laws that have governs of all the sciences of the creation. He it is who created the heavens and the earth in six days and his throne over the waters that he may try you. Which of you is the best in combat? But if thou were to say to him, you shall indeed be raised up after death, the unbelievers would be surely to say, there is nothing but sorcery. Quran, verse 11, Surah 7. He who created the heavens and the earth, and all in between in six days, and firmly established on the throne of authority, Allah most glorious, ask thou them about him of any things that you need. Quran 25, verse 59. Say, is it that you deny him who created the earth in two days, and do you join equal with him? He is the Lord of the world, of the Almanian. He set on the earth the mountains, standing firm, high above it, and restore blessings on the earth, and measure therein all things to give them nourishment in due proportion in four days, in accordance with the need of their needs, those who seek substance. Moreover, he comprehended, comprehended in his design the sky, and it had been of smoke. He said to it and to the earth, Come together willingly or unwillingly. They said, We come together willingly in obedience. So he completed them a seven filament, seven layers in two days, and he assigned to each heaven its duties and command. And we adore the lower heavens with lights and provide it with guards. Such is the decree of him, the exalted might and full of knowledge. Quran 41 verses 9 to 12. Abu Harari reported that Allah Messenger, peace and blessing be upon him, took hold of my hand and said, Allah exalted and glorious, created the clay on Saturday, and he created the mountains on Sunday, and he created the trees and the plants on Monday, and he created the things in detail in labor on Tuesday, and he created the lights on Wednesday, and lie caused the animals to spread out on Thursday, and he created Prophet Adam, peace and blessings be upon him, on Friday, Jema, between Asir and Maghrib. The last creation at the last hour 
of the hour of Friday between the afternoon and the night. Expansion of the universe. The Quran also does not rule out the idea of the universe is continuing to expand. The heavens, we have built them with power and verily we are expanding it. Quran 51 verse 47. They have been some historical debates among Muslim scholars about precisely the meaning of this verse. Since knowledge of the universe expansion was only recently discovered, the Quran is 100% correct. The Holy Day of Ashura or the Blessed Day of Ashura which is the 10th day of Muharram. Awaiti Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, glory be to him, created many things. The day when Allah created the Kalam, which is the pen. Uh, the day Allah created the tablet, the Lomax too. The day Allah created the Arsh, the throne of Allah. The day he created the Kursi, the footstool. The day Allah created the angels, Jibra'il, and all the other angels. On the day Allah created the heavens. And the day Allah created the stars, and the day Allah created our earth that we live on. And that same day Allah created the mountains and the oceans. The first rain that fell on the earth was on the day of Ashura. It is also the day set in the cycle of prophecy. The day of resurrection will occur on the day of Ashura. SubhanAllah. The time frame of mankind approximately. Today the to Prophet Isa is approximately 2,000 years. From Prophet Isa to Prophet Moses, peace and blessing on all the prophets and messengers, was approximately 2,000 years. From Prophet Musa, peace and blessing on him, to Prophet Ibrahim, Abraham, peace and blessing on him, is approximately 2,000 years. The Christians believe Adam and Eve, peace and blessing on him and them who were both on the earth less than 10,000 years. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the true timing of when from um, our great great grandfather Prophet Adam peace of Rasmin and all them to us on the current days. But this is just a guide or a rough estimation of time frame. We're not here millions and millions of years old. The earth may be, but not the human race. The human race of it has only been around for a very short time frame. This section will get into a little more details of some of the creation. The tablet or the low maksud. Allah created the tablet, the low maksud. The height is 100 years and the breadth or width is 100 years with ruby studs all around it. Now these 100 years to us we're not exactly sure, remember the time frame of years? You know, only Allah subhanahu wa knows the size, but it's huge. Very, very huge. The kalam, that means the pen. Allah created the pen 500 years distant in length and 40 years distant in width. And the pen had on it 100 nodes. The distance between two nodes being that of two years. He gave the pen 360 years penance, being a pen. From being intellect, Allah gave the pen 360 filaments. Every year, a filament extracts 360 varieties of comprehensive knowledge, and the pen details them in the tablet, the Lomaksu, the central database. This encompasses the knowledge in the universe until the day I'll rise on the day of judgment. The Lord then commanded the pen to write. And the pen asked, O oh Lord, what shall I write? Allah SWT, the Lord said, Write La ilaha illallah. 70,000 years the pen wrote it. Then he was ordered to write for another 70,000 years, Muhammad Rasulullah. There upon the pen exclaimed, Oh, what a beautiful, great name is that of Muhammad. So, um, that is to be mentioned in one of thy holiest, hallowed names. Oh, Lord. The Lord said then said, Open mind your manners. 
This name is the name of my beloved Habib Allah. From his light I created the arch, the throne, and the column, the pen, and the loma, so the tablet, and you are created from his light. Had it not been for him, I would not have created a single thing. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken these words, the pen split into two from the off of Allah, the Lord. And the place from which its peace was issued became blocked, so that to this very day his nip remained cloven in the two, which is a sign of this great divine secret thereof. Let no one fail in remembering and honoring the Holy Prophet, or become lax in the following his example and his noble customs that he taught us. Then again the Lord commanded the pen to write. What shall I write, O Lord? asked the pen. The Lord of the world of the Alameen then said, Write that which will be until the day of judgment. Said the pen, O Lord, what with what shall I begin with? Said Allah, with these words you shall commence. Bismillah of man Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. In perfect respect, the pen then set out to write these words upon the holy tablet Lomachud, and it completed writing them in 700 years. When the pen had written these words, Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke and said, It has taken you 700 years to write three of my attributes, my names. The name of our majesty, my mercy, and my compassion. These blessed words I have made as a gift, a present to the nation, the Ummat of Muhammad Sallallahu my beloved. By my majesty, I, I pledge that whenever any of the servants, the last nation of the Ummat of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi pronounces the word Bismillah of man Rahim with pure niyat, pure intention, I will write seven hundred years of countless reward for that servant. And seven hundred years of sin I will erase. Then again he command the pen to write about the sand, the trees, the houses, the buildings, all the everything, grass and plants and fruits. Everything was written that will happen until the day of judgment. The twelve veils, Allah's dressing of the light of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu The twelve of Rabi'ul is his birth. The twelve is the completion. Twelve constellations, twelve months, twelve tribes, twelve imams. Twelve is a very interesting number. That's why I have 12 veils. Um, 12, 1 plus, 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 is um, the third, the name of Allah, Al Malik, Absolute Ruler. The third, Rasul Hamid, Malik Hamid, the King of Praise, the one whom will praise Allah on the Day of Judgment to save the creation of torment. So that's the third name of Surah Allah, the Surah Hamid. After this, the Lord Almighty, blessed be He, created twelve veils. Each month is dress of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the light of creation. The first of these veils, the veil of power, within which the Prophet's soul remained for twelve thousand years, reciting, Glory be to the Lord, the Lord. The first lunar month, Muharram. The creation of the beloved Ahmed, which means praise one, Salam. Thereafter, the Lord created a tree, which is known as the tree of certainty. This tree has four branches. He has placed a blessed soul upon one of its branches, and it continues to praise Allah for forty thousand years, singing. Allah, the possessor of the mighty and the kindness. After it has first praised him with many and various praises, 
Almighty Allah created a mirror and he placed it so as the face of the soul Habib Allah and commanded his soul to gaze into the mirror. The soul looked into the mirror and saw itself saw itself reflect as possessing the most comingly and perfect form. He then recited five times thanking Allah, thanks be to Allah, exalted is he. And he fell down in frustration before his Lord. He remained in this sujda, which is when we go down to the ground, for 100 years, saying, Glory be to Allah, the sublime, who ignores nothing. Glory be to Allah, the mild one, who are facing up. Glory be to Allah, the generous one. Therefore, the counter of being obligated to the nation of Islam to perform such a frustration five times a day, these five prayers in the course of one day and night were a gift and honor to the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah created a lamp of green emerald. According to the Bible, uh, describes uh, an emerald throne of the heavenly king from the light and attached it to the tree by a chain of light. Then he placed the soul of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi inside the lamp and commanded to praise him with beautiful names. Asma al Husna. The, the beautiful names of Allah. First it did. And it began to recite each one of the names for one thousand years. When it reached the name of man, the most merciful, the, the gaze of mercy fell upon it, and the soul began to sweat from monarchy. Drops of sweat fell from it, as many as there were to be prophets and messengers. These drops of rose flavor uh, sweat turned into the soul of prophets. They all assemble around that lamp in the tree and Almighty Allah wants to address the soul of Muhammad Sallallahu See here this monocle of prophets whom I have created from the pearl-like drop of your sweat. Obeying his command, he glazed, gazed upon them and as the light of the eye unfolds the object. So the soul of all these prophets were suddenly engulfed in the light of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Nur, Muhammad Ka Nur, in the light of Muhammad Ka Nur, the light of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they cried, O Lord, who has wrapped us in light? The Lord answered them, This is the light of my Habib Allah, the beloved Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, my beloved. And if you will believe in him, and confirm his prophecy message, I will grant you honor of prophethood. Thereupon all the souls of the prophets declared they believed in the prophethood, and the Lord said, I bear witness, I bear witness to your acknowledgement. And they all assembled, as it is declared in the Holy Quran. This is what the Holy Quran says, Surah 3, verse 81. And we call, O people of the scripture, when Allah took the covenant of the prophet, saying, Whatever I give you in this, give you of the scripture and wisdom, and then there comes to you a messenger confirming what is with you, and you must believe in him and support him. Allah said, Have you acknowledged and take it upon my commitment? They said, we have acknowledged it. He said, then bear witness, and I am with you among the witness. Then this pure and holy soul took up its recital of the most beautiful names again. When it came to the name Karhar, Ar, Rab, Ha, Hadid, Wal Quran Al Majid. Its head began to sweat once more from the intensity of his divine majesty and honor. From this, from these beads of sweat, 
Almighty Allah created the souls of the blessed angels. From the sweat of the face of Rasulullah Allah created the arsh and the kursi, the throne and the end, where the kursi is the vine court art underneath. The tablet, Lomaksu, the kalam, the shams, the kamar, the sun, the moon, the stars. From the sweat of his chest, he created the scholars, the martyrs, and the righteous believers. From the sweat on his back were made from the Kaaba in the, in the seventh heaven, Baitul Mama, and the Kabbalah, the Kaaba, and the Haram in Jerusalem, and the tomb of the Holy Prophet in Medina, as well as many other masters throughout the world. From the sweat of his brow were made the souls of all believers, and from the sweat of his lower back were made the souls of the unbelievers, fire worshippers, idol worshippers, and so on. From the sweat of his feet were made all the ground from east to west, and all that is within. From every drop of sweat of the soul of one believer or unbelievers created. That is the reason the Prophet Muhammad is referred to as the father of souls. All these souls gather around the soul of Muhammad Sallallahu circling around him with praise and glorification for 1,000 years. Then the Lord commanded these souls to look at the soul of Muhammad Sallallahu the souls all obey. Those among them who fell upon his head were destined to become king and the head of state in the world. Those who gazed at his forehead became just chiefs. Those who gazed at his eyes would become happy of the word of Allah, one who committed to his memory. Those who saw the eyebrow became painter and artist. Those who saw his ears were to be those who accept warning and advice. Those who saw his blessed cheeks became performers of good and reasonable work. Those who saw his face became judge and perfume. And those who saw his blessed lips became ministers. Whoever saw his mouth was to be those who passed much. Whoever looked at his teeth would be completely appearance. Those who saw his tongue was to become ambassador of kings. Whoever saw his blessed throat was to become preacher and uh, Muslim to call the Azan. Whoever looked at his beard was to become a fighter in the way of Allah. Whoever looked at his upper arm has to become an archer or diver in the sea. Whoever saw his neck became a merchant or trader. Whoso saw his right hand became leader. Whoever saw his left hand became dispenser. Who holds a scale and measure out provision. Whoso looked at the palm of his hand became a generous person. Whoso looked at the back of his hand became a miser. Whoso saw the inside of the right hand became painter who saw the fingertip of the right hand was a writer or designer choreographer and who saw the tip of his left hand would be an iron worker who so saw his left chest would be a learner a scholar scholars who saw his back would be humble person and obeying the laws of the sharia who so saw his blessed side would be a warrior. Who so looked at his belly would be of the contended ones. And who so looked at his right knee would be of those who perform ruku and subdued. Who so looked at his blessed feet would become a hunter. And who saw the bottom of his soul become one of those who take to the road. Who saw his shadow were to become singer and uh, live there. Now all those who looked
but saw nothing were to become unbelievers, fire worshippers, unbelievers, idol worshippers. Those who didn't look at all were to become those who declare themselves to be gods, such as Nimrod, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, like that is like this is like now all the souls lined up in four rows the first row the, the first row stood the souls of the prophets the messengers on whom be peace second row were place of souls of holy saints friends Allah, friends of Allah third row stood the souls of the leading men and women Fourth row stood the souls of unbelievers. All these souls remain in the world or spiritually in the presence of Allah Almighty until their time had come to send into the material world of dunya. No one but Allah Almighty knows how much time elapsed from the time of the creation of Prophet Muhammad from blessed soul to his uh, descendants from the spiritual world into the physical world. It is narrated that the Prophet Muhammad saw some act in the Zibra'iya. How long is it since you were created? Um, the, uh, the angel answered, Oh Rasulullah, I don't know the number of years. All I know is that every 70,000 years a tremendous light shines forth from behind the canopy of the Divine Throne since the time of my creation. This light have appeared 12, <coughs> 12,000 times. Do you know what the light is? Asked Sayyid Muhammad Sallallahu No, I don't know what, uh, what I don't know, said the angel. It is the light of my soul in the world of the spirit, replied the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Consider then how immense a number it must be if 70,000 is multiplied by 12,000. The Arsh or Throne of Allah The Divine Throne of Arsh created from the Nur of Muhammad saw from the light of Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him. Allah created the Arsh from green emeralds, from red rubies created for its four foundation. And Allah created for it one thousand languages and he created upon the earth one thousand na nations. And each of these praise Allah, remembrance of Allah's Zikr, with a language from the language of the Arsh. The Arsh, the glorious Arsh, or the throne of Allah, the size, the power, and its beautiful bogs, the human mind. Believe in the existence of the Arsh is part of our faith, our Iman. However, its description is beyond our knowledge. It is an object of splendor and grandeur of each are the being described. It is the highest and the lowest physical object of creation. All the universes are encapsulated by the earth. It is a source of control and direction for all creation. It is from the earth that are all divine command comes from and are transmitted. The Arsh of Allah. The Arsh is a significantly large. No one knows how great its size and its magnificence except for Allah. Glory and exalted be He who created it. But He, but we are told by the Prophet that it is very large. The Arsh is like a dome stretching over the entire universe. It is a ceiling of the whole universe. It is also the ceiling of paradise. Nothing is <coughs> above it except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Glory and exalted be He. The bearer of the throne is in this world and the next world. It is what Allah says. Upon that day, eight shall carry above them the throne of the Lord. Surah 69 verse 17. The Prophet Sallallahu may Allah be pleased with him and grant him peace, said, Today they are four. This is in the explanation of the throne as a kingdom. As for the throne, which is the seat, it belongs to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and the angels bearing it on their back. 
Today they are four, and tomorrow they will be eight, in respect of bearing in the land of gathering. It is related of the form of the four uh, bearing angels was one related. It is said that one is in a human form, one is in a form of a lion, one is the form of an eagle, and the other one is the form of a bull. Allah speaks the truth and guides through the path. The throne bearing angels never once raise their heads to glaze upward from the dazzling gleam of the light of the throne. One of these angels have the form of a man, and he is always praying interceding on the behalf of mankind that they may be granted their substance and provision and that their sins may be forgiven. The second one of these angels are the shape of an eagle and he is always praying for the provision of the birds and flying creatures. The third is the angel that is a form of a lion. He is always praying for the beasts of faith to be given their provision. The fourth is like an ox or a bull was praying for animals to grant their direct animals to grant their provision. The Arsh. After passing through all veils, I reach the divine throne. Allah has created it of green emeralds and it has four legs of red ruby. Divine throne has as many towns as there were created beings, and each of these is glorified the Lord unceasingly. The angels hold to each one of the feet of the divine throne and hold it aloft until the day of judgment. On that day there will be two angels holding up the foot of the throne, eight angels in all. The size of these angels is such that the distance between the heel and the ankle of each is that of five hundred years way faring and from their airlobes to their neck is another 500 years traveling distance. The Arsh, the throne. Around the throne of Allah there are four rivers. The river of shimming light, the river of blazing fire, the river of ice, white ice glittering to the eyes, the river of water. Angels stand over these river raising Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, I have been granted permission to speak to an angel, one of the bearing of the throne. His feet are in the lowest earth and the throne is resting on his horn. The distance from his earlobe to the shoulder is like that of a bird flying for 700 years. That angel says, Glory be to you. Where are you? Said, I have been granted permission to speak about one of the angels of Allah. One of the uh, uh, bearing angels distance from the earlobe to his shoulder is a distance of 700 year journey. We speak not the language of humanity. We are speaking the court language of the divine throne. They are speak the truth and speak with caution. Assume silence within and without that you may hear divine language spoken. What was described above a ruby, emerald, pearl, and so on may be understood in modern terms as exotic, extreme rare materials. Much importance and emphasis has been given to the liquid water as we see on the planet Earth. The feeling one gets from their text is that the liquid water, the icy water, and perhaps even the vapor form are building materials for life from out of space, space, carefully fashioned and measured and transported to the Earth. So the water of the earth did not come from the earth itself. It was delivered somehow from outer space as all the new scientific evidence suggested. It was narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu said, The people will fall unconscious on the day of resurrection. I will be the first to regain conscious and Moses will be there 
holding on to one of the pillars of the throne, the arch. I do not know whether he woke up before me or if he was exempt because he had fallen unconscious at the Mount Sinai when he saw um, of Allah. However, it is known from Hadith that four angels will carry the arch now, and on the day of resurrection there will be eight angels. It is reported uh, from poems which the Prophet approved to this effect, namely the four carrying angels of the arch of Allah, glory and exalted be of him. And now it reads, on the, on the right side, one in the shape of a man, and on the other in the shape of an ox or a bull. On the left side, one shape of an eagle, uh, a vulture, and on the other one, a shape of a lion. This means that now there's four angels carrying the arch, one in the shape of man, one in the name of an oxen or a bull, one in the shape of an eagle, and in the shape of a lion. These four angels were created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala glory and exalted be he exclusively for holding the arch. Yet it is reported that on the day of resurrection eight angels will carry the, the arch. These angels are so giant and extremely tall. Another evidence for this is that Quran verse mentioned above that the angels will be on the, the, its side and eight angels will be that day bearing the throne of Allah above them. Surah 69 verse 17 which states that this will be on the day of resurrection. To sum up, there are four angels on the day of resurrection. They shall be with glory be to Allah is the one in resort for help and Allah knows best. Some of the scholars narrated between the first heaven and the one above it is a distance of 500 years. Between each of the heavens there is a difference of 500 years. Between the seventh heaven and the cursey there is a distance of 500 years. Between the cursey and the waters distance of 500 years. And the throne of Allah to the water is above. Allah is above the throne and nothing whatsoever of your deed is hidden from Him. Moreover, the distance around divine throne are measured not by meters rather by time time of travel around something or a distance uh, sorry or between two ends perhaps this travel and measurement is in light years measurement of this due to the divine throne being built from light Allah knows this he said that the seven heavens in relation to the cursey are like a ring in a very open space, a big open space. Likewise, the cursey in the relation to the arch, the throne, is like a ring in a very big open space. This indicates the huge size of the arch, the throne, which is carried by four huge angels. Compared to the greatness of the divine arch, the throne, the entire divine court, the seven heavens and the seven layers of the earth are a single lamp suspended beneath the sky. All around it are 70,000 rows of angels circling at all times reciting Allahu Akbar, Takbir, and Tawheed, La ilaha illallah. Behind them are again 70,000 rows of angels standing upright reciting Allahu Akbar, and La ilaha illallah. Behind them are 100,000 rows of angels who hold up their right hand over their left hand and each of them are reciting uh, different that's the 70,000 veils separate these angels from the divine arch the throne the Prophet also said when he went up the marriage then I beheld a single pearl of green emerald upon which was written this line of writing La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Abu Bakr, Sadiqi, Omar, al -Khurub. There is no God but the true God, Allah. Muhammad Sallallahu is the last, um, uh, the messenger of Allah. Abu Bakr, the truthful. Omar, the one who discerns truth from falsehood. The declaration of unity, the Kalama Tawheed, is written on the basis upon support of the divine throne and upon the legs of the throne itself. And it is written over the gates of the seven heavens. 
Sometimes this phrase was added, I have strengthened him through Ali. When I reached the divine throne, I witnessed a great event. One drop fell from the throne into my mouth, and the sweetness of it surpassed everything I have ever tasted. When I had swallowed it, the Lord of the universe enlightened my heart with knowledge and wisdom of all that I had gone before and was yet to come. A light from the earth surrounded me, and I was engulfed by it. I was aware of nothing but the light. When faced with the light, I perceived everything through my heart's eyes as clearly as thought. I was looking through my eyes. I perceived what was behind me as clearly as that which was before me at the level with my chest. After all this occurred, I came into a state when I heard absolutely nothing, not the voices of the angels, not the sound of any other thing. This state caused me to experience great terror. Then I suddenly heard a voice that seems to be the voice of a Bakr saying, Stay your step, O Muhammad, for your Lord is praying blessing. When I heard his voice, all the fear departed from me completely, and I began to wonder, what is Abu Bakr doing here? Has he surpassed me? I wonder, and what does it mean, the Lord is praying? The Lord who is free from all needs. What could be the meaning of this all? This is a very important subject which needs to be well understood. The reason for the Holy Prophet also perceiving the Divine Throne, the Arsh was not to see the Lord Almighty, for Almighty Allah exempts from any particular place. The Holy Prophet also was taken to a station in order to witness the entire the entirety of creation and to see the manifestation of the Lord Divine Supreme Majesty and Power, as he says in the verse of the Quran. Indeed, we saw one of the greatest signs of your Lord, and we might show him some of other signs. Apart from this, there is another matter that is crucial to understand. Let it not be imagined that the greatness of the things described in the account are exaggerated, as the Lord has described in the aforementioned verse. Indeed, we saw. Indeed, he saw one of the greatest signs of the world. As the Lord of the world himself here describes a thing as being great, how great then must it be? For perhaps the Holy Ghost also must give us only a summary report of what he saw in accordance with his mind capacity. Most of what he saw, he did not reveal to us, for it is not possible to give a description of the greatest thing that is witnessed as the mind of man is not equipped to comprehend such things. Therefore, he did not mention those matters. This must be understood. Side Book Curry, Volume 6, Book 60, Number 326. Once I was with the Prophet, I was on the Nemesia by some of time. The Prophet said, Oh, Abu Dha, do you know where the sun sets? I replied, Allah in the fall knows this, he said. It goes and prostrate underneath Allah's arch, and that is Allah's day. And the sun runs on a fixed port for its turn to creep. And that is a decree for Almighty and all knowing. 36, verse 38. The sun fixed force is beneath underneath the arch, the throne of Allah. The chair or courtesy, the footstool of Allah. The courtesy, the Holy Prophet Muslim said, I mounted upon a bell and it took me as far as the courtesy, divine courtyard. The Lord Almighty has created the courtesy from pearls, and it is very large, so great it is that it defies all description. In the Holy Quran, Allah says about the courtesy, this courtesy comprises the heaven and the earth, and preserving to whom oppresses him not. The most excellent of commentators is about this in his commentary 
These birds lived the skin, the seven layers of the earth, and the seven layers of the heavens were put together and spread out next to the first of the would be as a tiny ring which has been lost in the desert. Between the Kursi, divine courtyard, and the Arsh, divine throne, there is seven deep veils. If not for these, the angels of the Kursi would be burnt from the light of the divine Arsh throne. This course expands over the heavens and the earth. There are two verse 255 verse for his knowledge. The correct view is that the curse is a chair, footstool, and the arch and the throne is that which most merciful realms of the Estella. And knowledge is the attribute of the knowledgeable one by means of which he understands that which he knows. The curse is the footstool, the chair, and the angels who inhabit it. Then we brought the chair into existence. Inside the throne, the arch, and put the angels of its own nature in it. Each pair was the base for its inhabitants, which were created in it just like the elements from which it and the inhabitants were created. So Adam was created from the earth, and he and his sons were filled the earth. In the noble chair, the world was divided into report and judgment. These are two feet which descend from the throne. The arsh has report in the reports of the prophet. Also. And then inside the chair of Allah creates spheres, one inside the other. These spheres he created a world from it which they inhabit, which are named angels. They adore the spheres with stars and inspire every heaven with its commands on to, until he create the form of the product known well as that. The four ranks between the spirit and the dust. Allah uh, uh, portion four ranks between the spirit described with two attributes and the dust. He made each rank a stage for four angels. He appointed these angels as guardians over what he originated of the world below below them from the union to the lower to the lowest of the low. He gave each of those angels knowledge which he wants to, to carry out in the world. The first thing Allah brought into existence form in source form which is connected to the knowledge and the management of these angels is the universal body. The first shape which Allah opened in this body is the global sphere form since it is the best form. Then Allah descends by bringing into existence and, cre and creation to the completion of the manufacture and made all that he created the domain of these angels. He entrusted them with it, with its affairs in this world and the next world and safeguard them from opposing what he commands them to do. He told us that they do not disobey Allah in what He commands them and they do what they are commanded. Surah 66 verse 6 The creation of the earth and the determination of its food. Allah created the earth and determined its food in, it, in respect of its products. Its means it is the treasury of their food. We already mentioned the organization and the formation of the book of the world in the book. Part of the germination of its food in is the existence of water, air, and fire, as well as what is contained in vapor, clouds, lightning, thunder, and terrestrial effects. That is the germination by the Almighty and the Almighty. So, verse 96, he created the gyms and the fire and the birds, reptiles of the land and the sea, insects from the decay of the earth so that the air would be pure for us, free of the vapor of decays which, if mixed with air, in which Allah entrusted light and well being for man and animals, would have made them sick, weak, or ill. 
So Allah purified the atmosphere for him as a kindness on his, on his part when he formed these creatures of decaying things. So there were few illness and disease. The eight names of paradise. Janito Marwa, the lowest. Daru Makan. Darat Salam. Daru Kru. Janito Eden, or in English, the Garden of Eden, the middle. Janito Nani. Janito Kasa. Janito Ferdows, the highest. Place name. There will be gardens in Jannah. Every garden will have a length of a hundred years journey. The shadow of these gardens will be very dense. Their plants will be free of thorns. The size of the leaves will be equal to elephants' ears. Their fruits will be hanging and rows. Janito, um, Nara, the lowest, Janito, Ada in the middle, Janito, Ferdows, the highest. For those for those who love each other, for the sake of Allah, we are yet a pillar on which there will be 70,000 rooms. These will shine for the residents of Jannah, as the sun shines for the residents of the Dunya. There will be rooms in Jannah in such a way that every room will have 70,000 dining sheets. On every dining sheet, 70 types of food will be served. One bunch of dates will be equal to the length of 12 arms. The size of a date will be equal to the big picture. These will be whiter than milk, sweeter than honey, softer than butter, and free of seed. The stem of these plants will be made up of gold and silver. There will be also gardens of grapes, and bunches of grapes will be very big. The size of each the single grape will be equal to a big picture. Someone asked, Ya Rasulullah Sallam, will it be sufficient for me and my family if it was answered? It will be sufficient for you and the whole tribe. There will be four canals in, the, in every general. Water, milk, honey, and there will also be three fountains. Kafur, Zam, Jadil, Fasim. Qualities of the people of Jannah. In Jannah, the height of every man in which is believers will be equal to the height of Hazrat Adam, Salat of Islam, 60 arm length, that is approximately 90 feet. Beauty will be like as of Yusuf, peace and blessings on him. Age of youth will be like as of Isa, peace and blessings on him, around 30, 33 years. Sweetness of voice will be like as of Daoud, peace and blessings on him. Tolerance will be like as of Yaqub, peace and blessings on him. Patience will be like as of Ayub, peace and blessings on him. Inheritance will be like that of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The seven names of hellfire are listed below. The first one, the fire, because of the blazing fire. The second one, the hellfire because of the depth of its pit. The third, the blazing fire because of its flame. The fourth, the blazing fire because of its kindleness and its event. The fifth, because the intensity of its heat. The sixth, broken pieces of debris because it breaks and it crushes everything that is thrown into it. And the third, seventh, the abyss, because of the one who is thrown into it is thrown from the top to the bottom. The tree of Zakum, which is the food for the people of hellfire. The tree is described in the Quran as interpretation of the meaning as a cursed tree mentioned in the Quran. Surah 17 verse 16. Allah also says about it interpretation and meaning. Then more so verily you are the, the air ones and denier of the of resurrection. You verily will eat of the tree of the tomb. Then you will fill your belly there with and drink boiling water on top of it. You will drink the 
like a thirsty camel that will be their entertainment on the day of recompense. Surah 56 verse 51 to 56. Very the tree of the tomb will be the food of the sinners. Like boiling oil, it will boil in their bellies. Like the boiling of scorching water, it is. it will be said, seize him and drag him into the midst of the blazing fire. Then pour over his head the torment of the boiling water. Taste it, taste you this. Verily, you were the, uh, pretending to do the Almighty and the generous. Verily, this is what the wealthy you used to do. Story 44, verses 43 to 50. In the paradise, better entertainment for the trees of whom the horrible trail in hell. Truly, we have made it as a trial for the people who are called astray, disbelievers, wrongdoers, and so on. Verily it is a tree that springs out from the bottom of hellfire and shoots out its uh, food stock uh, like to the head of Shaitan, the devil. Truly they will eat there out and fill the belly there with it. Then on top, on the top of that, they will be given a boiling water to drink so that it will become a mixture of boiling water and dressing in their belly. Then thereafter their return is to the flaming fire. Sure, 37 verses 62 to 68. Seven layers of the earth. Allah says in the Quran in this regard what means it is Allah who has created seven heavens and of the earth of light thereof. Example 7, Sure 12. The seven earth talks about our seven layers of the earth one on top of another, just like seven heavens. You can see from the diagram the seven layers of the earth. My dear brothers and sisters and children, I hope you enjoy the insight of the beginning of creation. The feel is huge. I mean, I just touched the surface of it. And it's just to give you an awareness of how things started. And from my research that I've done, I hope all the information is correct. Allah knows best. Uh, we ask Almighty Allah to forgive us and protect us. And my dear brothers, sisters and children, when you look at the sky, the beauty of what Allah has created, how He holds our sky up without falling with pillars that we cannot see. As we look at a beautiful sunset, Allah created the, the shams, the sun, the camera, the moon at night. And we look at the, the imagine the stars and how Allah decorated the heavens, the lowest heavens so we could see at night and waterfalls and forests and gardens of flowers and fruits and as we look at each other Allah has created us with his beauty he's made us with a beautiful creation and he created the animals and he created substance for every single living thing on that exists Allah has provided food and he's never left any one of his creation without substance for this we say alhamdulillah we thank Allah all of the beautiful things and the wonders we created. So my dear brothers, anytime you're free, say Alhamdulillah, say Allah, thank you for everything you've given us. You've given us things beyond our comprehension. You've given us things beyond our means. And we thank you for everything you've given us. Alhamdulillah. So for now we say brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah bless you and reward you. Amen.